In today's video, we'll be dealing with these rolling background animations. They're going to be looping so that you can apply them in the background of any of your videos. We're going to try and keep it really simple and we'll do multiple variations with the same setup. So with that, let's actually begin the tutorial. In our default scene, the only thing that we'll need is an actual plane. So let's delete the default cube by tapping X and then pressing shift A and searching for a plane. Now we can press RX90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees and maybe we can scale it up by five units by pressing S5. Then we'll select our camera and press Alt G to clear location followed by Alt R to clear its rotation and then we'll press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Then we can press zero on your numpad to go into the camera view and you can press G Y and just move it back until you have the entire thing in frame. Now, of course, you can go to the camera properties by pressing this button and changing the focal length down to give it a nice wide angle field of view, which will create nice distortion towards the edges. But we will be creating that distortion through compositing as well later on. However, I'll keep it at 18 and I'll press G Y and just continue moving it until it fills up the camera scene again. Then I'll go to the viewport display, go down to the pass bar 2 and increase that all the way to 1. Then I'll select the default light and tap X to delete it. I'll change the viewport shading to render. Now let's select the actual plane, bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window and change this from the 3D viewport to the shader editor. Then we'll tap N to remove this side panel and we'll go to the material properties. We'll use this drop down and choose the default material because we're not using that for anything else. Now we'll delete the principal to BSDF by selecting it and tapping X and then we'll press shift A and search for an emission node and plug that into the surface. Now for the actual color, we'll press shift A and search for a Voronoi texture. And initially, if we plug the distance directly into the color, you can see that we don't get the grid that we want. The first and most important thing to do is change the randomness down to zero. To help see the grid better, let's press shift A and search for a color ramp. And when you plug this in and increase the contrast, you'll realize that it's not the grid that we want because it's circular. So to make this square, what we have to do is change this from Euclidean to Chebyshev and that way you should get a nice rectangular grid. Now, if you can't see anything, start off by playing around with the color ramp and just bringing that in until you see what you have. Now you see it doesn't appear to be a grid, but it shows up as a single color and that's because our scale is currently kept at an odd integer. If you keep this at maybe an odd integer like seven, it's going to remain as one color. But if you keep it at any other value, you'll be able to see the grid pattern. So you can see how the grid is present, but the moment we go to a value of seven or maybe a value of nine, it's going to become a single color. If we keep it at a value of eight as well, or any even integer, we still see the grid. Now we can go to our color ramp and just change this from linear to constant and bring this slider in so that we just get a thin line forming our grid. So something like that should be good enough. And we can always play around with the scale just like this to any value that suits you, except for any odd integer. So maybe I'll go with the value of eight and I think that's fine. But again, for better control, I'll just press control T with the node wrangler are enabled to get a texture coordinate and mapping node. Remember, you can always add these in by yourself manually if node wrangler is not enabled. Now I'm going to switch from generated to object, which will also change the scale. And I think this size is actually better, but I'll keep the scale at six for now. Next for the animation section, we'll go to our output properties. We'll change the frame rate to 30 frames per second. End frame, I'll keep it at 150 so that we get a five second long loop. Output folder, I can choose whichever one I want. I'll keep it at the same folder that I'm saving the blend file in. File format, I'll choose FFmpeg video. The encoding, I'm gonna change the container to MPEG4 and I'm gonna keep the output quality as perceptually lossless. Now I'll press the back arrow to go to frame zero. And for the location, you can see that by moving it on the X axis, you actually get that motion. So now, since our Voronoi texture has an integer multiple scale, we can always move this by an integer multiple and it should appear as the same value again. So right now on frame zero, we can hover over this and tap I and then on frame 150, which is our last frame, we can change this to a value of one and then tap I and you can see that the texture appears to not have moved at all. If we were to play the animation right now, you can see what the motion looks like and it's speeding up in the middle and then slowing down at the end. So to prevent that, we'll just select this, come down here and press T and change it to linear. So now we get a smooth loop of all of these lines moving from the right to the left. However, if you want to actually slow this down, instead of moving it by one, you can try out different sub multiples. So let's say one divided by two first, and you see even this works. So maybe one divided by four we could have used, and that does not work. So you have to see which sub multiples work. And in my case, I'll actually change it to a value of 0 0.5, which is one by two. And I'll tap I to just make this half as fast. So that's good enough. And we can start with the actual compositor section. So let's come up here, use this drop down and change the compositor to camera. If you don't see these options, you can always use your scroll wheel to just scroll through them until you see it. Then we'll switch this 
from the shader editor to the compositor. Now we'll check this use nodes button. And if you can't see the nodes, just press period on your numpad to centralize the nodes. Now move this to the side and then press shift A and search for a distortion node. So now you can take the lens distortion, plug it in right here, and I'm going to distort it to a value of maybe 0.2 and I'll choose this fit option. Then I'll add in some dispersion as well. Let's go with the value of 0.03. And I think that looks pretty cool. Now you could switch on jitter if you want. And to show you the difference, I'll just render out a test frame for now. And then I'll switch the slot from one to two and I'll just remove that and I'll switch on jitter and then I'll render out the jittered version. And if you actually zoom into the jittered version, you can see that towards these edges, there's a little bit of blurring that occurs. This is a type of jitter that's added in to the actual distortion. If you go to the version without the jitter, you can see that there's absolutely smooth lines created and there isn't that noise that was created. So you can see the difference between the jitter version and the non-jitter version. So it's up to you as to which type of aesthetic suits your needs. So you can keep this or you can't, but I'm going to keep it without the jitter and I'm going to switch this off for now. Next, if you're happy with the way this looks, you can render out version one by pressing render animation. To create the other versions, let's go ahead and select the plane and press shift D to duplicate it. Then I'll just hide the first plane by selecting it and pressing both hide in viewport as well as hide in renders. If you do not do this, it will be rendered out even though it's hidden in the viewport. So make sure you switch this off as well select the plane, go to the material properties, and then just press this button to create another duplicate. Now it becomes its own material. You can switch back to the shader editor. And here for the Voronoi texture, I'm actually going to switch this from F1 to distance to edge. Now I'll go ahead and just bring this off to create a nice white background with a black grid. And I'll control click to add in a new stop. And I'll change this color from white to a black color. Now I'll just bring this black slider in until we get a small dot present right at the center. So I think this looks pretty cool and can be used as really nice backgrounds as well. Of course, when I'm creating this white variation, I would like to change the color management, which is present in the render properties all the way down right here. So here you have to expand the color management and change the view transform from filmic to standard so that the white becomes an actual white. And this could be variation two. So you can press render animation. Then for variation three, again, I'll press shift D to duplicate it. I'll go ahead and hide the second plane for this new plane that I just created materials. I'll go ahead and duplicate it. And this time, instead of using the distance to edge, I'll keep it to F1 itself, but I'll change this from Chebyshev to Minkowski. In Minkowski, I can go ahead and play around with these sliders until I get these nice rounded squares, which I think looks pretty cool as well. So it's really up to you as to which variations you like and what suits your scenes. But I think this is variation three. And remember when you're saving these, if you just press render animation without doing anything, it'll overwrite the previous animation. So make sure in your output properties, you actually change the output put name to what you want. So maybe I could call this variation three. And then since I'm saving it as an MP4, I can switch off file extensions and press dot MP4 as well. And then I can press the render animation. Similarly, while rendering out plane two, I'd have to make sure that I change this to maybe variation two. And then I go ahead and disable plane three and I press render animation. So with that, you should get looping backgrounds just like this. I hope this was a fun tutorial and it was pretty fast and easier than the normal tutorials that I create on this channel. If you enjoyed it, definitely check out other videos on my channel because I post videos every single day. I'm trying to keep a blend between easy tutorials for absolute beginners as well as slightly more complex tutorials. If you feel like the pace is off, do let me know and I'll try and create different variations until I get a pace that works for everyone. Until my next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching. Keep creating and don't forget to stay creative.